Is anybody there? Hey, is this thing on? Hello? Hello? Hi, right, one, two, three, let's get this started. I went looking for gloves and I found one glove. And I spent another five minutes to find the second glove. And my wife's like, why don't you keep them together? And I said, well, if I have one glove by itself, nobody's gonna steal one glove. So that's why I keep two gloves in two separate locations. And I got another phone. Today I wanna to talk about four books that I've written. Uh, not written a book. Gosh, why do I keep saying that? Hey everyone, Robert with Homestead in the Burbs. So, I want to welcome you to our channel. Um, want to talk about what we're doing, a little bit of our history, and where we're planning to go from here. So, we live in a suburb of Salt Lake City, and uh, we purchased a house uh, about a year and a half ago. It's a, it's a normal 1960s home that we've been remodeling along the way. And our plan was to go and build on an off-grid property that's about two hours from here. Circumstances have changed. We have been purchasing the property. However, my wife's gotten a job as a school teacher here locally, and she really loves it. So, we've decided to homestead in the Burbs. So we're sitting inside of the pool room, which is also uh, going to be the new greenhouse. Um, I believe it's about 32 degrees outside, but I checked the temperature earlier and it's sitting at about 61 degrees. The reason it's staying so warm in here, um, despite there not being much insulation and it's all glass, um, all the glass windows, is because I've got 22,000 gallons of hot water sitting in the pool underneath this cover. Uh, this creates a, a thermal uh, reservoir uh, that will keep this area from freezing. So the swimming pool is uh, completely enclosed by these glass windows and a roof. So it is temperature controlled. However, uh, if you look at it another way, this really is a nice big greenhouse. There's a approximate 8 by 15 area where we can plant year round. So this is what we plan on doing inside the greenhouse. As for the outside of the house, we've got basically three areas and a little bonus area that I wanna talk about. The first part is the front of the house itself. What we plan on doing is transforming this area into a little seating area, um, adding to the curb appeal of the house, but remove most of the grass, either by taking it out or covering it up and covered with mulch. Um, and adding planter boxes and hopefully add a tree uh, in a one area. The problem that we have that we need to overcome on that is we have three trees on the front of the house that actually need to come out. The one tree is right up against the house and when the wind blows it actually bang, bangs up against the side of the house. So um, that's a no-brainer. The two trees that are on the parking strip uh, need to come out because they're really pretty much dead. So we're going to transform that into a, a flower garden in the front um, to attract bees and, and, and other uh, friendly uh, critters that are going to help with our garden. So we're in a cul-de-sac, so we have a pie shape on either side of the house. On the right side of the house, um, there is a giant apple tree that's in the back. Earlier this summer, the power company came through with a crew and they topped out our apple tree. Uh, they did so because the power lines were running right through it, so I understand the, the concept and the reasonings behind it. Um, we never knew what the variety of apple was on the tree. So after much discussion, my wife and I have decided to completely remove the tree and start over. Uh, there's some rose bushes along the south end of the fence that we're going to remove part of them so we can use this space to grow. We're probably going to add two trees on this side, um, maybe an apple tree, another apple tree, and a peach tree. On the left side of the house, which is on the north side of the house, uh, we have two trees in our backyard as well. One of the trees is right up against the side of the house, so that one's obviously going to come out. There's another tree right off the back porch that the tree crew came through and trimmed. And I'm not sure what exactly happened, but it caused part of it to die off this summer. We noticed a lot of brown leaves. We're going to take that tree out as well. So, so basically, 
we're going to have no trees where we have right now we have i believe six trees uh, six or seven trees that are going to come out um, and we're going to start all over the left side of the house we have berries along the back wall that were out of control so i just mowed those all the way down and i have created a, a compost bin or compost area i haven't really started a bin yet but uh, so that's the uh, what we're going to do on that side so we plan on getting a few chickens. We've got a really nice area that runs between the two halves of the yard in the back between uh, the wall and the back of the, the greenhouse slash pool area. Right now there's a, there's a bunch of really cool plants back there, but we're gonna take out part of those plants for a little bit of a garden, but the other half we're gonna have is a chicken run. Um, it'll be easy to, to fence this area in and protect them from of the animals that are around in this area. I'm gonna to have to check into to zoning to see exactly what we can get as far as rabbits or birds or chickens or turkeys, but I think right now we'll probably stick with a couple of chickens, uh, just enough to uh, provide eggs for my wife and I. And I figure we could start getting our, our starts going in March, sometime in the middle of March. Traditionally, the last freeze date in this area is right around the first week of May. However, most old timers here say don't plant anything outside until after Mother's Day. So that gives us a, about four to five months to really get the entire area prepped, trees cut down, mulch piles um, built, and really get ready for the growing season. Five months seems like a long time to get everything done. However, with our winters around here, I mean, we, could, we could be under snow for four to six weeks, maybe eight weeks or longer. Um, but, you know, let's hope it stays a mild winter. So far, we've, we've only had a couple of very small snows. And um, because of our elevation, it's, uh, it's been pretty warm this year. A little farther north of us, they've gotten quite a bit of snow. And obviously the mountains, they get plenty of snow. But... They can keep all that snow up there. Um, it's not going to hurt my feelings. And I guess that's all I have to say. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. So if you like what you hear, just subscribe. You know, if I come up with some stuff that you like, then give me a big thumbs up. If there's any comments you want to leave, I'll, I'll definitely respond to every single one. I mean, I have, uh, like right now, I have one subscriber. And that's okay. That's okay. I might be pretty goofy. You might see some comedic relief here, but... Bye. Today's video is sponsored by Nobody, even though I'm drinking out of a Bucky's cup. Who knows what's inside? Come visit. I need the help. Come help me. Help me. I gotta cut all these trees down. I need help. Please help me.